We'll begin reading uh, our Sunday school lesson where it's in Acts chapter 15 and <clears throat> we cover most of that chapter. Begin reading at verse 1. The title of the, our lesson today is Clarifying the Message. <clears throat> begin at verse 1. And certain men which came down from Judea taught the brethren and said, Except ye be circumcised after the manner of Moses, ye cannot be saved. When therefore Paul and Barnabas had no small dissension and disputation with them, they determined that Paul and Barnabas and certain other of them should go up to Jerusalem unto the apostles and elders about this question. And being brought on their way by the church, they passed through Phoenice, Phoenice, and Samaria, declaring the conversion of the Jews, and they caused great joy unto all the brethren. And when they were come to Jerusalem, they received they were received of the church and of the apostles and elders, and they declared all things that God had done with them. <clears throat> <coughs> Excuse me. But there rose up certain of the sect, sect of the Pharisees, which believed, saying that it was needful to circumcise them and to command them to keep the law of Moses. And the apostles and elders came together for to consider of this manner, matter. And when there had been much disputing, Peter rose up and said unto them, Men and brethren, ye know how that a good while ago God made choice among us, that the Gentiles by my mouth should hear the word of the gospel and believe. And God which knoweth the hearts bear them witness, giving them the Holy Ghost, even as he did unto us. And put no difference between us and them, purifying their hearts by faith. Now therefore, why tempt ye God to put a yoke upon the neck of the disciples, which neither our fathers nor we were able to bear? But we believe that through the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, we shall be saved even as they. And we go to verse 22. Then, it, then pleased it the apostles and elders with the whole church to send chosen men of their own company to Antioch with Paul and Barnabas, namely Judas, sur, surnamed Barsabas, and Silas, chief men among the brethren. For as, mu for as much as we have heard that certain which went out from us have troubled you with words, subverting your soul, saying ye must be circumcised and keep the, the law, to whom we gave no such commandment. It seemed good unto us, being assembled with one accord, to send chosen men unto you with our beloved Bar Bar Barnabas and Paul, men that have hazarded their lives for the name of the, our Lord Jesus Christ. We have sent therefore Judas and Silas who shall also tell you the same things by mouth. For it seemed good to the Holy Ghost and to us to lay upon you no greater burden than these necessary things. That ye abstain from meats offered to idols and from blood and from things strangled and from fornication from which ye shall keep yourselves, ye shall do well, fare ye well. So when they were dismissed, they came to Antioch and when they had <coughs> gathered the multitude together, they delivered the epistle, which when they read, they rejoiced for consolation. May God bless the red portion of his word today and uh, I'm going to ask uh, Brother uh, Mutt if he would pray for a Sunday school lesson. <clears throat> Amen. 
clarifying the message. <clears throat> Paul and uh, Barnabas has completed their first missionary journey and uh, is back at the church uh, over here on the right side at Antioch. Yeah, right over there where the little hand is, the cursor. And they're back over there and they have reported back to the church of their success that they had on their first missionary journey. However, there are some problems arising because some want to add certain things to God's plan of salvation. Hey, it's, not, it's still going on today. People want to add things to God's plan of salvation. In Judea, right straight down, come down, uh, uh, down to Jerusalem down there, uh, right in there, Judea, uh, there are some uh, Hebrew uh, converts down there who are Pharisees and uh, who have no intention of giving up the Mosaic system. These Pharisees were uh, really a bunch of self-righteous men and they, uh, they wanted things done their way and not God's way. And uh, they were down in uh, Judea saying that a Gentile is not saved unless he's circumcised. Well, let me quote what Jesus said in John 3.16. Jesus said, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Now the word circumcision wasn't in that, was it? No, it wasn't in that. The word believeth in him is what it takes. Whosoever Whosoever believeth. Hey, th that opened the door for every individual born of man and woman. Whosoever believeth shall be saved and, uh, and have everlasting life. Didn't say a thing about having to be circumcised. But the Pharisees wanted to add something. And, and today people want to add other things. They, uh, there are some today that says, hey, uh, you can't get saved until you, you're uh, baptized in water. Well, that's not so. The thief on the cross didn't come down and be baptized and Christ himself told him, today thou shalt be with me in paradise. And then there's another p group of people going around today say, hey, you can't go to heaven unless you speak in unknown tongues. That's a bunch of malarkey straight from the devil. Jesus didn't speak in tongues, did he? Why, no. He knew exactly what he was saying. And I told a young man one time that told me he spoke in tongues and they asked me, do you speak in tongues? I said, no, sir, I don't. I said, if I'm sick, got cancer, I want to pray to God just as plain as I can speak and tell him and know exactly what I'm asking him for to heal me of cancer. And I'm not about to speak in tongues. Well, uh, he didn't say anything, but he, he knew what I was talking about. And, uh, but this, this, this bunch of stuff that you've got to add something to in order to be saved is not in God's holy word. It simply says that whosoever believeth, and that's all it is. But the lesson centers today on this group of Pharisees. And uh, in verse 1, certain men came down from uh, Judea up to Antioch. Well, it's up on the map, but there's down here around Jerusalem, and it's all downhill to Antioch. Because uh, Jerusalem is hilly country. And uh, so they, they came uh, down to Antioch and were teaching, except you be circumcised after the manner of Moses, you cannot be saved. Well, that's a lie straight out of the mouth of the devil, you know. There's nothing to that. And we see here that these men are trying to add something to God's plan of salvation. And too many people today want to add something and make getting saved difficult. The law says ye must do 
or ye must not do. And God says, just believe. And that's all it takes, is just believing. Boy, I'm glad that's all it took, because I, I wouldn't have been able to get saved if I had all that other stuff to do. I was 43 years old, and when I really believed in my heart, I got saved by the marvelous grace of God. My faith in Him saved me, and I received everlasting life. And I'm going to tell you something. I don't have to worry about when God wrote my name, in the, name down in the Lamb's Book of Life. It's there. It'll stay there regardless of what takes place from here on out. God gave me everlasting life. And that's what the Word says. If you believe, you have everlasting life. And I'll take God's Word any day. So in verse 2, when Paul and them was back up, uh, there's up to, or down to Antioch, down's up on the map, and up is down. So we back, go, uh, go uh, move, uh, back to Antioch. That's, that's, uh, that's down to Antioch. Paul and Barnabas heard what this council was trying to enforce, and uh, it upset Paul and Barnabas. Hey, that, that was contrary to everything that Paul and Barnabas had been preaching on their first missionary journey. Well, I don't blame them. I'd get upset. You know what? We ought to get upset when people teach something contrary to what thus saith the Word of God. I believe it's okay for Christians to get upset when people that don't know what they're talking about try to teach a false doctrine, and we ought to get upset. Take issue with them. Now, it said be angry and sin not, but uh, we have a right to be upset when people teach, try to teach something contrary to what thus saith the Word of God. And uh, the, this group... Uh, uh, believed that Christ uh, died on the cross, he was buried, and he rose again on the third day, but they wanted to add their little bit in. They wanted to get the law into the picture. Christ fulfilled the law. There was no need for the law once Christ died on the Calvary's cross. So, uh, uh, the, once again, the church wants to send Paul and Barnabas back up to Jerusalem. So bring her down to Jerusalem, Sam, on the map. And, uh, and, and, and the church at Antioch is sending Paul and Barnabas back up to Jerusalem. And uh, in verses 3 and 4, Paul and Barnabas set out. But on the way, guess what Paul and Barnabas did? They, 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 they stopped at, uh, and preached on the way. They preached at a couple of places. I believe one was Samaria and uh, uh, Phoenice and Samaria, which is uh, it's a, right now and then, a little bit up, just a little bit more. Along in there is Samaria, maybe a little bit to the left, and Phoenice. And Paul and Barnabas preached on the way back up to Jerusalem. And uh, uh, and they were declaring the conversion of Gentiles. People were saved. And this gave all the brethren great joy. And then they arrived up at Jerusalem and the church received them. And uh, they had told... Uh, they had told the church at Jerusalem all that God had done for them on their first missionary journey. They told how the Gentiles knew nothing about the law and were wondrously saved and received everlasting life. In verses 5 and 6, the Pharisees are not about to give up. Hey, the devil's got his people in the world today. Once again, we see these self-righteous Pharisees, which, uh, which were professed believers, telling others that circumcision was necessary in order to be saved. <laughs> they just don't let up. They really commanded them to keep the law of Moses. And that, that was not what God wanted. And uh, whenever... You add something to God's gospel, you don't really have the gospel, but you have a religion. 
And the problem today in our world, we got too many religions in the world today. People dying and going to hell because of their religion. And, uh, uh, you know, they, they just won't simply believe and be saved. And all who come by Christ, the, the only way you can make it to Jesus Christ is by faith. By faith through grace. Uh, and, and by gray, and, and, and all who come to Christ must come by faith and no other way. There's no other way that you can come to Christ. No other way. He is the way. Read your Bible. That's what he said. Christ himself said it. In John chapter 14 and 6, he said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. And that's the only way. Regardless of what others may say, do, or believe. It doesn't matter. That's the only way. So the apostles and the elders came together to consider this matter. The Pharisees were causing problems in the church there at Jerusalem. So... They, the apostles and, uh, and uh, came down and they had they uh, uh, and the elders of the church got together and discussed this what, uh, what we're going to do about this problem and in verse 7 Peter's down here in the church at Jerusalem and Peter speaks up he begins to speak and he does his talking throughout the rest of this lesson Peter's been quiet uh, for a while now in our studies. We've been dealing with Paul and Barnabas. But now Peter begins to speak. And after they uh, met and were discussing this matter, Peter then spoke to the council uh, and said that a good while ago, God made a choice among them that the Gentiles by his mouth should hear the word of the gospel and believe. Peter was preaching. And Peter learned that salvation is not decided. He, Peter learned firsthand that salvation is not decided by what we say, do, or even eat. Remember one time Peter said, uh, uh, God told him to eat uh, uh, something. And Peter said, no, I'm not eating. And uh, this is unclean. And God told him, said, don't, tell, don't you say that anything that I tell you to eat is unclean. And Peter learned firsthand that it's not what you eat that determines your salvation. Uh, or by keeping the Sabbath or any other day. Salvation is simply by grace through faith. Nothing else. You don't need to add anything. And don't take anything away from it. Simply by grace, God's grace through faith. That's all it takes. Just believe. Just believe. You know what I'm talking about. You're sa you that are saved that are here today, that's how you got saved. You didn't go out and lay down a $50 bill and said, I want $50 worth of God's salvation. Or if you had more, you laid down a $100 bill and said, I'll take $100 worth. It was there free. Just believe. Just believe. Verses 8 and 9. He's, uh, Peter says here that God knows the heart and uh, bear them witness, giving them the Holy Ghost. That given these Gentiles, that God knew the heart of these Gentiles who believed and giving them the Holy Ghost just like he gave the Holy Ghost to us. Peter tells them. This is a good time, Peter, to stand up and speak. A lot of times Peter got in trouble when he spoke, but he didn't this time. And uh, therefore, there, and he says, there's no difference in these Gentiles and you and me. Peter tells him. He said, God purified their hearts by faith just like he purified your and my heart by faith. And to be saved, all it takes is the faith, is faith in the gospel of God and nothing else. Nothing else. Oh, it, it amazes me how today people want to add something to God's plan of salvation. 
Okay. God didn't, when God gave us the plan of salvation, it was complete. It was complete. He didn't need anything added to it, and he don't take anything away from it. God knew, uh, knew exactly what we needed, and he su supplied that for us, for whosoever shall believe. In verse 10, Peter makes a tremendous statement here. He tells them that neither our fathers have, nor we have kept the law. It was imp an impossibility for man to keep the law of Moses. These Pharisees tried it. And they stood on the street corner bragging about how I do this and I do that. And all the time they're breaking the law of Moses. Nobody was able to keep the law. And the, let me tell you right now, the law never was intended to save anyone and it never saved anyone. Couldn't save anyone. And Peter says, well, why do you want to put this yoke upon the neck of all the disciples? It's ridiculous. In verse 11, Peter said it very well. He said, the Jews must be saved exactly the same way that the Gentiles are saved. And Simon Peter was saved by grace through faith, trusting Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. I got saved by grace through faith, trusting Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. And if you're saved, you got saved the very same way. There's no other way. In verse 22 now, well, we see, we jump to verse 22 and the final decision of the council that met at the church in Jerusalem was that the Gentiles who were saved were not to be put under the Mosaic system. That was not necessary. They did ask for uh, those Gentiles to abstain from pollution of idols. Hey, this was something that went on uh, in the, had been going on for years. The reason was they'd offer, they'd take a, a prime animal and offer it for a sacrifice. And then after offering it for a sacrifice, they took the meat and took it out and sold it in the marketplaces. And that was, that, that once that animal was offered for a sacrifice to God, it was supposed to be sacrificed. Not a halfway job and not take the, the, the prime meat of the animals offered out and sell it in the marketplace. But this, this had been going on. And so they, he brings it up here. And, uh, and the church was very pleased with the decision that in Jerusalem, they decided to send men down to Antioch. We're going back to Antioch here shortly. <coughs> with Paul and Barnabas. And these two men were uh, Judas, surnamed Barsabas and Silas. And we'll be hearing about them uh, probably starting next week's lesson. Then they wrote letters greeting the church brethren or greeting the brethren into church in Antioch. They wrote letters. In verse 24, they told them the church had heard about those who had gone out telling, the, telling that the Gentiles had to be circumcised and said these were not sent out by the church. These self-righteous Pharisees was doing that on their own. They weren't sent out by the church. These were Judaizers. They were labeled as Judaizers who had no church authority. But they wanted to keep the law of Moses. They wanted to make the plan of salvation difficult. Verse 25. This, this verse tells us how that church operated and how our churches today should operate. They had assembled in one accord and decided to send out chosen men out with Barnabas and Paul to preach God's gospel. And Psalm 133, 1 says, Behold how good and how pleasant it is, 
how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. I always point out the word unity. What's right in the middle of the word unity is I. And that's where you and I should be when it comes to unity. We should be right in the middle of unity. And we, we really must come that way. And, 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 and when we meet for the good of the gospel and put self out of the way. Hey, there's no place in church for big eyes and little U's. Praise the Lord. Hey, we come, we're to come together one mind and one accord and, and let God pour out his blessings upon us. He'll do that. He'll do that. So uh, these, uh, the church sent out men. Uh, they picked out uh, Judas and, uh, or Silas. And uh, God wanted, uh, these men had been tested in the church. And the church had picked, chosen two good men to go out. And God wants men who are willing to sacrifice in order to get the word out. Now, we just heard about some of the sacrifices that a missionary that Brother Carson was telling us about. It's no easy task for a missionary to go out and preach God's gospel. He has, he has to give up a lot of things in order to preach the word. In verse 27, uh, the, these church uh, uh, had these two such men who could fill the position. It was Judas and Silas. And uh, in verse 28, they told the men that it seemed good to the Holy Ghost to send and also to them to lay this burden upon these two men. Hey, what they were doing was uh, uh, impressed upon the church by the Holy Spirit to do, send these two men. That's why we pray about missionaries that we select. And, and we should always uh, seek the leadership of the Holy Spirit. But the question is that follows it, we don't always follow the Holy Spirit's leadership. We pray for it in our prayers. We hear a lot of asking God to lead us and guide us. And then... After we get up from our prayer bones, we go about our merry way doing what we're doing before we even ask. That's not really what God wants. If we ask God to lead us and guide us and he impresses his leadership upon us, we should follow that leadership. Sometimes it's not always popular or easy, but we're nevertheless, we should follow the leadership of the Holy Spirit. Now, verse 29, they gave them some instructions. However, Gentile believers are not required to meet any demands of the Mosaic system. When <clears throat> we're, we don't have to worry about the, the c c demands of the Mosaic system. We don't have to follow that. They were... Uh, they, uh, all believers should not do anything that offend a fellow brother in Christ. Hey, if, if I do something that offends a brother of mine, I, I need to stop it, not offend. I don't want to offend anyone. And, and, and we should not do anything that offends others. But I will go one step further. Sometimes you just have to show up to be offensive to some people. Yeah, yeah, that's right. That happens. That happens. Well, there's old so-and-so come to church today. See? But, knowingly, we should not offend our brothers and sisters in Christ. They were uh, to abstain from... Uh, uh, meats offered to idols and from blood and from things strangled and from fornication. The last thing is, is fornication is what's worldwide today. And God says abstain from it. 
And also God's word says there are going to be some, some that can't make it to heaven and one of them is fornicators. Then they were, uh, they, told, they were told if they followed all these instructions, they would fare well and do very good. So in verse 30, <clears throat> so when they were dismissed, <clears throat> they returned back down to Antioch. Go back to the church at Antioch in Syria. And they reported back to the church at Antioch all the things that had been accomplished. And everyone rejoiced for the consolation in the decision to send these men out to preach the gospel. And I quote again Psalm 133 and verse 1. Behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. This is good for all of God's people. This is, this is what we need in our churches first and foremost today. Much can be accomplished when we come together in one mind and one accord. Believers are not to be wood carriers. Hey, did you know that? Well, let me make it simple. What it's saying is Paul Kelly don't go around carrying a chip of wood on his shoulder. That's what we don't want to be doing, carrying chips on our shoulders. And, and too many times, hey, I've been guilty of that. And maybe you have. I don't know about you. I just know about me. But we're not to be going around carrying chips on our shoulders. Let us rejoice in the grace of God. And uh, we have what the world really needs today. And, but they won't accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Hey, it's all here. But the world refuses to accept Jesus Christ as their Savior. Have you been saved? You need to get saved today if you don't have him as your Lord and Savior. Be the best day of your life. Be the best day of your life. And you'd probably remember it all the days of your life. We thank you for your attention today. Hope that something's been said that'll make each of us better servants. And uh, we'll get back in, uh, probably start Paul's second missionary journey next Sunday. I'm going to ask Brother Jim Grimmett to dismiss her class.